In today's episode of Resident Evil 2 Remake Mythbusters, we ask what is the most effective way to take down a liquor, does shooting off Mr X's hat make him more aggressive, and how exactly do you shrug a zombie off without taking any damage? The answer to all those questions plus many more is only moments away, but before we get started, if you have any myths or theories you want me to check out, the best place to let me know is either my Twitter or Instagram. The link to both is in the description and in my pinned comment. Anyway, without further delay, let's get myth busting. So up first, we'll take a look at some of your suggestions for a myth covered in the Last episode. Now I spent a lot of time trying to shoot liquors in the bumhole. For context, the myth was that if you used Claire's grenade launcher and shot a liquor in its a-hole, it would die in one shot. Many attempts later, I found that theory to be false. Well, it seems you guys think I didn't investigate bumholes enough, as it was suggested that an acid round to the bottom would take a liquor down in one shot. Let's take a look if it did. So no it didn't. The liquor pops up in exactly the same manner as it did with the fire round, so hopefully we can finally put liquor bums to bed. Something else that was spotted in the last video by a follower on Twitter was the fact that liquors seem to react to the noise of the SMG reloading. The myth we were investigating was could liquors hear the shots fired from a silenced SMG and it turns out they couldn't. In fact the liquors were attracted to wherever I shot so it proved to be a handy tool if you're trying to clear a path. Well as you can see in this next clip it looks like the liquors reacted whenever the SMG was reloaded. Take a look. So when this theory was first presented to me, my mind was blown. If this turned out to be true, it is crazy attention to detail. So I went back down the same hallway and reloaded the SMG. Let's see if the liquors react. To ignore the fact that these two liquors were more in sync than the 90s Justin Timberlake, it's pretty clear they weren't reacting to the reload sound. I think that even the slightest movement makes the liquors aware of your presence and in the first clip I was strafing when reloading so it seemed like they recognised the reload sound when in fact they didn't. So that myth is busted. You know I said we can finally put the phrase liquor bums to bed, well this is the final time I ever have to utter those words I promise. So we established that shooting a liquor in the rear end doesn't kill it in one hit, but maybe that was because they're on the ceiling. An Instagram follower mentioned that you can kill liquors with one hit with Claire's grenade launcher as long as they are on the floor. I wasn't sure why it would make a difference, but in the interest of science, well sort of, I gave it a shot. And it actually worked. My theory as to why it one shots them on the floor and not one on the ceiling is pretty simple. I think it's because when a liquor is on the floor, they are engulfed in flames. When you shoot a liquor on the ceiling, they fall onto the floor, therefore avoiding the flames. In fact, you can see the initial liquor taking damage animation end, then a death animation starts as they die from the fire. Do you see what I mean? It's like a little jump cut between animations. I could be wrong, of course, so let me know what you think in the comments. The final liquor myth that I wanted to cover today is one that couldn't possibly be true. It was said that knifing a liquor is the easiest way to kill one. A bonus of this method of course is that a knife is silent so Mr X will leave you well alone. So I stuck on my big boy pants and I gave it a go. I 
I cannot believe this works. The original commenter said that if you attack with the knife, the liquor is stun locked. If you didn't know, that means that every time you slash a liquor with the knife, the liquor stun animation plays out. Hit the liquor with the knife enough times and it will just loop the animation over and over, making it more or less a sitting duck. This is a common tactic in video games, but I think it's taken this long to find this method out as nobody has dared get this close to a liquor before. And now time for our Mr. X themed portion of the video. Once again, you guys have been suggesting loads of different theories about the big grey lump, so I picked out some of my favourite to try out. One of the funniest suggestions was could you get Mr. X to kill a zombie? Now if you weren't aware, when a zombie is in his way, Mr. X will push the zombie to the side. So I led Mr. X to my favourite testing area, the library, and tried my best to get him to kill a zombie. And after exactly 32 minutes of trying, that was the entire length of my recording, he didn't kill a zombie. It wasn't an issue getting Mr. X to push the zombies, I just think that the push itself does very little damage unfortunately. Maybe if I spent more time trying, it may have worked, but after 32 minutes, it didn't seem to be having any effect on the zombies whatsoever. One of the myths tested in the last episode was what exactly draws Mr. X to you? We tested standing still in the corner, and in 10 minutes he didn't even enter the library, let alone find me. We tested sprinting around the library, which took Mr. X just over 5 minutes to respond to, and finally we tested shooting, which took a very very quick 40 seconds. Stupidly, I didn't test how long it would take for Mr. X to respond if we use Claire's silenced SMG. So let's do that now. So it took Mr. X just under a minute to enter the room, but that's not all. This was the only time he actually found me. As of all these tests, this was carried out as soon as you meet Mr. X, the scene where he lifts the crashed helicopter, and was done on standard difficulty. I have no idea why he managed to find me the first time, but the other four times I tested it, he didn't show up. This is the one theory I'm going to need your help to work out what's going on. Thanks to Boundary Breaks video, the link will be in the description, we know that unlike most games of an enemy that follows you, Mr. X is always on the map. Maybe in those four times I tested previously he was further away, who knows. The fall of Mr X theory is one that couldn't possibly be true. Is Mr X more aggressive without his hat? It seems way too silly but in the interest of science I decided to put it to the test. So once again we will encounter Mr X at the helicopter and lure him outside. We will stand still and see how fast he comes at us with and without his hat. We'll also let him attack us to see if his attacks are stronger or faster. So let's start by looking at Mr X with his hat on. <laughs> So pretty standard stuff, he sort of speed walks towards you then slows down as he gets close, once he hits you he then gives you a chance to get up and make your escape. Now that we've seen what happens with his hat on, let's carry out the same test with his hat off. So this is a strange one. His movement speed seems exactly the same as it was with his hat on, but interestingly he seems to attack quicker with his hat off. As you can see he doesn't seem to take the time to let you get back up and walk away. I tested this 5 times with the hat on and 5 times with the hat off, and every time except once he attacked twice without giving me a chance to get up. Again this isn't definitive proof that he's more aggressive about his hat, but it is odd that the only time he performed the double attack is when he didn't have his hat on. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, specifically if you think there are other 
ways of testing this theory. Now onto the final myth. It's a theory that garnered over 1,000 comments in the last video and one that hopefully I aim to solve today. And that is, can you avoid damage after a zombie has grabbed you? In the original video, I shared a clip from a viewer called Kevin who managed to escape a zombie's grab in the library without taking any damage. I tried to replicate the move, but couldn't do it. Well, I'm happy to say that thanks to all the comments on the last video, I now know how to do it. Allow me to demonstrate. So as you saw, I performed it two times in a row, but I know that some of you will think that it can only happen during the intro, so here's a clip of it happening further into the game. So let's start by clearing up some of the mysteries surrounding this move. One of the big theories around Kevin's clip was that he was playing on assisted mode, well I can guarantee you that I was playing on standard. Another theory was that the zombies have to be injured, but again I can guarantee you that I hadn't shot at the zombies once. The most interesting theory was that you have to be running, and this one proved to be true, more on that in a bit. Once you know how to perform the dodge, it's actually quite easy. It's all about moving fast and positioning yourself on the edge of the zombie's reach. Sometimes the animation will begin to play out, but the zombie will still tackle you to the floor. I don't know what caused that to happen, but it can. Now whilst I'm showing you that this move is possible, it's not easy to pull off and requires a lot of luck. You need a zombie to be facing in a certain direction and you need a space so that you can be running. Walking won't work. This is a myth that I'm going to call confirmed. After all, you can get attacked by a zombie and avoid damage, but it's so hard to pull off that I just don't think it's a viable strategy when trying to escape zombies. If the animation triggers, just count yourself lucky and move along. So that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, then a like is really appreciated. If you want to make any suggestions for myths that I should take a look at, then the best place to contact me is either on Twitter or Instagram. The link for both of those will be in the description or in my pinned comment. Thank you all for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.